Hey everybody, John Foss, CW Twin Cities. Very excited and honored to be talking with the one and only Chris Catan about the Soviet sleep experiment. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate the time. So, uh, what happened last night? Did you go to a bar? Yeah, or? I went to a couple bars. Okay, just checking out the Twin Cities. This did, yeah, I was just checking out the Twin Cities. All that's what I said, and they just keep hitting me. <laughs> well, it happens. I don't know what happened. No, Minnesota no. nice does not exist. No, it doesn't. Well, I, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> up to a pl up to a level. So, um, so obviously, this is your film makeup. What went wrong? Yes, in the, What happens in this film that le leads to this? Well, I was to trying this. to get out of there because I'm a prisoner yep. in the chamber, and uh, then I uh, then the guard beat me. Okay. I don't want to ruin the whole surprise. Yeah. Is there a lot of physical comedy? Yes. <laughs> well, physical <laughs> fighting and stuff like that involved here? No, just in the in, towards the end of the movie. Uh, but in this, yeah, I stab somebody, and um, and uh, what else? I get hit. I get more beaten than I hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. So, how did you get? I mean, we're in the middle of Minnesota here. You, yes, you're you're a big, famous, very wow. successful actor. Thank you, comedian. Nice what you. brings you here to the middle of the country? Well, I was uh, my brother actually. Um, his name's Andrew Joslin, and he's uh, he's doing the music for this movie. And he told me about the project, and it sounded like, uh, and then they were like interested in, you know, uh, in me, and I was interested because it was a drama too. And I haven't done drama, I've done drama in a, a couple times, but I haven't done one like this dramatic. So, you know, so it was, sounded appealing, and I read the script, and it sounded like, uh, and they wanted to shoot it here because of the uh, all the snowy scenes, but there's no snow in this scene. Most of the movie's not in the snow. Actually, there's one scene in the snow, but. Um, I think they just want to shoot here because the, the director lives here. What's your role in the, <laughs> in the film? Uh, I play one of the uh, the prisoners, uh, subject three. There's you know the number of subjects being uh, being experimented on, and uh, I think it was a true story, uh, believe it or not, in the, the Soviet Union, and uh, it was a study. And uh, I'm just using all words that are in the title of the movie, and uh, we slept. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. It's perfect. So. You're obviously, as you mentioned, you know, known for comedy, as I mentioned too. Correct. And now you're doing this dramatic role. Is yes. this something you see going forward in, in your career? Is this something you just wanted to try as a one-off, or what do you think? Yeah, it all depends what happens or what, what's handed to me. Um, yeah, it'd be fun to do that. You know, I, I, I was trained, or like my early age, you know, in high school, of course, and stuff like that. I always did dramatic plays, and I always played the, the lead bad guy, you know like in the crucible or things like that. But uh, it wasn't until I got into the Groundlings in Los Angeles, this improv group called the Groundlings, and that where I learned how to, well, I, I learned the tools of comedy and stuff like that. So I was, um, it, it just came easier to me, comedy than drama. But I really do uh, enjoy doing drama sometimes a, a great deal. Okay, so yeah. no preference, you just kind of like doing both of them? Yeah. And we'll see where this Definitely see leads. What, see what happens, yeah. Okay, so was it the script sure. that appealed to you or? or just working with people you knew? Well, I didn't know anyone on the film except for my brother, but he's, he's post this, you know, um, he's in the post-production part of it. Um, but yeah, it'll probably be the first time I collaborate uh, actually with my brother on something, if anything. Um, and, um, but everyone else is new to me here on the, sh on, the, on the show. We've been having actually, actually the movie, but we've been having a lot of fun actually, even though it's very dramatic. Um, we've been doing a lot of, we've been, well, we've been stuck in there more or less the, most of the time. And so we've been kind of cuckoo in a way. So kind of like people in the movie, you're going to go, you're going insane. L uh, slightly. How many hours you spend in there? Uh, so far? Yeah. Since we started? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Like six, I'd say about six hours a day, more or less for the last two weeks. So six times, uh, 14 equals, uh, that's 70, I don't know. Let's get the calculator, 70, guys. 70, 80 something, 84, 86, okay. is that right? Um, something like that. That's crazy. So the, so the, the. 84. Um, so, so it's not all. No, that's not right. Yeah, whatever. You're anyway. not always doing fun things on the set. It's a lot of hanging out and waiting and. Yeah, there's a lot of hanging out and waiting. Um, but you know, also uh, uh, one of the uh, biggest um, uh, things that I had to do uh, was to learn the Russian accent. Uh, and you had to be really good at it because there's actually people here from Russia that are speaking in their natural 
uh, accent, and so you had to be as good as them. Was it hard to pick so that up? Hard. Yeah, it was, because I only had a day to do it, you know, because the dialect coach was here when I arrived, and I didn't start uh, shooting. I didn't, um, I started shooting the day after I arrived. So the guy, the, uh, the dialect coach, uh, came here um, to meet me right before we started shooting. So I only had like an hour to start learning how to speak Russian. Although I was in the Soviet Union uh, years ago, back in 1989. Because wow. I fell in love with a ballerina girl. Really? Yeah. Uh, ballerina girl. I don't know why I separated those words. What was but, your... Uh, ballerina. What, were your, what was your experience there? That was, it was, well, it's a little depressing because it was before, you know, it was still like Lenin was, the statues were still up and... You know, Lenin, Lenin, it was Leningrad, it wasn't St. Petersburg, uh, so it was still communist, and um, it was kind of depressing, you know, the, the supermarkets had like, there's like a dead fish on the ground and like some lettuce, it was really rather, yeah, it was pretty depressing. So, so I don't try there. communism, people. Yeah, don't try it, or don't bring <laughs> it up yourself. <laughs> exactly. Don't try to overrule your, in your own home. And, and one of the things that comes with having a very successful comedian like yourself is that you're in high demand. So it sounds like this week you were actually sent to New York City right. to, 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 to recreate the, a I famous I wish it were Christmas skit. today, yes. I wish it was Christmas today. That was a lot of fun. Well, we, um, it was last minute and uh, I think they, were, they called Friday and Fallon called and Fallon emailed me and asked if you want. Does if he I wanted actually to. call? Well, he calls me because I'm a, okay. uh, That's cool. a friend. But yeah. other, in some other cases, they wouldn't call directly. Like if it were, say, Jimmy Kimmel, I'm not close with him, but I'm close with Fallon. So Fallon called, and then also his show called to see if it could technically be, you know, if I can able to do it. And uh, I was out here, and Barry was very nice enough to let me go for a couple of days uh, to New York. Is that tiring to do right in the middle of a film? Not tiring, but, you know, it's a lot of traveling back and forth. But it was okay. It was worth it. It was a blast. And Ariana Grande wanted to do it last minute. I, oh, she was already on the show, so they asked her to, to, do, to do the, um, the cold opening of the music. So, uh, yeah, it's a big hit. She kind of helped. She kind of supported you. She, yeah, she was on my... Yeah, she held my... Very big People role. were teasing me because she was following me around. And <laughs> <laughs> Probably not a bad thing. No, not at all. It's very <laughs> yeah. cool. She's very, very sweet. And then you, you came back here to spend some more time in the chamber. The back and to the chamber is yeah. such a big, yeah, it's big juxtapose. Yeah, you're having like this huge like I know. energy I like, rush, and then it's back here for different. It was like a rush of like <laughs> being on Fallon on live television, and then back doing that with the group with Tracy and Horatio and Jimmy, and then and then Ariana Grande, and then back in here. So when you're <laughs> when you're in here, I'm sure you guys get a lot of you have a lot of inside jokes, and you're bonding and sure. just trying to pass the time. Paul brought up. The, he wanted me to ask you about the, the Madonna and George Michael oh, comments. Tell me about that. That's just part of being crazy. That's just killing time? Yeah, just killing What's time. What's that all about? What? They were, uh, he just got, well, his character is kind of annoying anyway. So he became annoying asking me about. Paul's character? Yeah, he was just talking about being, <laughs> well, just that he was uh, bringing up Madonna. We're, teas we're making fun of the photographer here on the set because he used to be a, a deadhead. Uh, follower of Grateful Dead, except he followed them like after the lead singer died, which is very strange. So it was like after Jerry Garcia was gone. So, so he's the hardcore. fact that he was, no, well, it's no, not hardcore at all. That's just a strange thing. You don't really usually, it's like following a band on the road when half the band is like a cover band. Like, let's mm -hmm. go follow this band. I'm such a hardcore, you know, fan that yeah. I'm going to go follow the cover band. So we're making fun of that. <laughs> and somehow I got into Madonna. And uh, George Michael, and that he just, it just was, it was really silly. It was something to pass the time away, because you're sitting in there for different shots to come up and stuff. Mm -hmm. So speaking it's of... It's too inside to, to let you know how hilarious it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it was silly. We're, being, we're just joking around. But what was funny was that, that he, the photographer here, he's following the Grateful Dead when the uh, lead singer doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it's just a funny song, you know. So to, to, to follow the cover band of the Beatles would be interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. So speaking of SNL, yes, it's something that you know is such a big, amazing thing for somebody to be a part of that yeah. it just it's with you the rest of your life. Right. And like we said, you just went back and recreated a skit. Sure. What was that experience like? And when you, I mean, one thing I thought would always think that would be tough is 
is when you're a part of it, knowing yeah. when to leave. Because number one, you don't want to stay too long. But number two, it's like you're, you have the best job ever and you right. have no guarantees of what's going to happen afterwards. Sure. So tell us about the experience of being a cast on member. Saturday on Saturday Night Live? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I chose to go because it was eight years already. I thought that was a good enough time. Did you feel like you, were, you didn't want to do it anymore? Or did you feel like I need to go or else people are going to be like, hey, what's up with you not leaving? Like, you oh, I don't know if they the would. Well, people, it's different now. That was a day when it was like you should move on, but now people stay on for like 15, 16 years. Uh, you know, like Keenan does and, uh, you know, or Daryl did for a long time. Is it scary? Uh, mm, well, just because you're not busy six days a week, you're just working less on something like that. And it's such a grind. You're, you're writing, because I wrote all my stuff, so you're with, or collaborated as well, too. But like you write and you perform, and so it's a big grind. It's a different situation, but you know, when you do a sitcom or a film, it's still, you're still busy, but it's a different kind of, uh, you know, level of uh, s stress and work, but it's, it's fantastic. But yeah, it does, it could, it could age you a little bit, you know, it's a lot of work. But you can enjoy There's it while life. you're there, it's not. Oh yeah, totally, I loved it, yeah. I yeah, have heard the common theme that the work is just yeah. extreme, like you finish a show and then you're right back at it again. Right, 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 exactly that way. Actually, I have a book coming out, it'll be out in May called Baby Don't Hurt Me. And it'll be, uh, I'll be doing a big book tour. So, uh, yeah, so is it talks it a lot about the, yeah, it is. Okay. It'll be out in May and uh, it'll be, um, yeah, so. Is that going to be uh, focusing on the SNL years? Yeah, or most, SNL and then, yeah, then SNL. And post SNL? Yeah, everything, but mostly okay. SNL. But there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff, behind the red curtain, as they say. Any teasers you can give us? Uh, there's a Valentine's Day dinner with Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes that I had once with just them. Okay. That was interesting. <laughs> where'd you where'd you guys go uh, it was at uh, his house okay anything crazy no happen? i can't that was the teaser all right all right well, it's I, you, it worked now i want more oh, okay okay now i want more <laughs> all right so you were also recently on dancing with the stars yeah and one thing that you talked about that you hadn't talked about in the yeah. past 14 years ago i broke my neck while i was working and i've had four surgeries since then here i want to see this x-ray of that's my back <gasps> oh my gosh. It's really sad when somebody says, I miss the old Chris. That sucks. We don't need to talk about that. You don't That'll want to talk about that? Well, no, bring it up. we don't have to. It'll be in the book. Okay, yeah. yeah. I have to save stuff for the book, so. Okay, I guess my yeah. only question about that, and definitely don't have to answer if you don't want to, is yeah. um, going through those surgeries, and now, sure, yeah. you, now it's, you're healthy again. Yeah. But one of the big things with your comedy in the past is yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. physical comedy. Sure. Is it, can you still do that kind of stuff, or do you, are I can you shifting now, yeah. your direction? Now I can, but you, can. you know, there was a lot of absent time you know, that I wasn't able to uh, perform to that degree. And I still can't do some certain things, but more or less I could do everything that I wanted to do, you know. Um, but yeah, no, it was, a, it was four surgeries. And, uh, but it talks about in the book and the extent of what happened. And I reveal where it happened because nobody knows where it happened, you know, how I broke my neck and where it happened and how it happened and all that stuff. And nobody knows some. Other than the crack in your head and the bloody the nose. Well, that's, how, yeah. how are you I today? I haven't washed my face since then. Yeah. It's been 20 years and I left my face. <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> 15 years, rather. How, how are you today? Uh, good. You, everything's health-wise, you're doing well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. great, great. Yeah. And also you're doing, tell me about the, the cartoon that you're a part of. Uh, um, is it? The new one. Vanicula? <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, yes, that is on now. I'm sorry, because I did, I recorded those so much last year. Yeah, that's on, uh, on the Cartoon Network, Vanicula. And uh, but you can always you can always follow me on Instagram, mm -hmm. Chris Catan official on Instagram, or on Twitter at Chris Catan. Always you know. Oh, I have a lot of stand up dates too. I do a lot of stand up too, of course. So will you be, per be performing dates. in Minnesota? I think Minnesota, I am coming or? back here. Yeah, I think I am okay. for sure next year. So I have to watch out for that. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. So when it comes to this film and being a part of this film, which is like we talked about, something different for you. Yeah. What would success look like for this project? I, I don't know. Uh, it depends on the uh, distribution of this film. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I heard the last film that uh, Barry did was, was uh, really turned out well. It was yeah. really good, actually. Your company is floundering, and you are certainly in no position to salvage it. I think Lionsgate picked it up, so it didn't even have to go through a festival or anything like that. So I think at the, at the worst, it would go through a festival or something. But, you know, it's a great vibe about it. It's very, uh, you know, hardcore. It's not like a silly movie and it's it's a it's dramatic film with a lot of heart and and a lot of uh, 
you know, he's very passionate, but he's very passionate, and all the actors were so good, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it was surprising. I didn't know, I didn't think they would, I knew they'd be good, but I didn't think they'd be, you know, you just never know. And uh, it was refreshing to see how uh, professional everybody is on this shoot. When you're on a set here in Minnesota, is it, does it feel different than L.A. or New York City? Or, does, or is it, when, when you get here, is it the same thing? Uh, it, well, this is an ultra-low-budget bu ultra show, uh, so it's, um, it is uh, different uh, that way. So we have the same, we have bagels for breakfast every day, and that's <laughs> usually more of a ray. But, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just ultra-low-budget. That's the, really the only difference other than that, you know, the talent is... Probably better than most shows, you know, actually. What has you know. your experience been in Minnesota so far? Uh, Cracker Barrel. That's a lot of fun. That's a, that's a hangout, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a hangout right best. here. I love how they make you wait in the lobby so you wanna, might want to buy some. Oh, yeah, the, beat the up plush toys Christmas or something. tree or something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You haven't, it sounds like you haven't had a lot of time to kind of experience no, the I Twin haven't. Cities much. No, nothing really. Okay. No. Okay. Long well, hours, but it's all worth it. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how this comes out, and I'm sure it'll be great. One thing yeah. I talk to the other actors about is, is, is like if there's if there's somebody that is where you were when you started your career, and sure. they have a passion for what you're, you're doing. Yeah. What would you give them as far as advice to get to where you are today? Oh, believe in yourself because no one's gonna believe in you as much as you will yourself. So make sure that's the strongest thing, and um, that you're at peace with yourself, and um, that you pursue all your dreams. You know, and believe in yourself. You just gotta believe in yourself. All right. Yeah. Sounds great. And yeah. you kind of you mentioned this before, but where can we find out more about you? Oh, uh, Chris Catan official on Instagram, or uh, Twitter's at Chris Catan, and I always uh, update stuff every day. There's new pictures of Ariana and I on the internet now, so that's very exciting. And, it, and your book, <laughs> which is completed, it, it, sure. I, it looks like it's already ready for pre-sale. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Any more? Yeah. Any more teasers you can give us there? Or? Well, I'll be doing a lot of book tour stuff, so you'll see me back out and in the world, you know, promoting it, like on Fallon or Stephen Colbert and stuff like that, and, um, and book tour stuff. So uh, I'm very excited about that. It took me a long time to write that, and uh, it's very cool. It's going to be one of the better uh, autobiographies, I feel. Any other projects so, coming up that we should know about? Um, yeah, there's a show. I can't, it's not, we don't have the contracts yet, so, but that looks really good, and I'm very excited about that. That's very cool. All right. But you'll hear about it. If you follow me on Chris Catan Official, You'll find out everything you need to know about Chris Catan. Sounds good. All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much. Thanks, buddy. It was an honor meeting you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, man. That was very Appreciate cool. Appreciate it.